I've come to the small cemetery in Windermere, now known as the South Lakeland Cemetery. And I'm just going to have a walk through it and uh, pick out anything that attracts my attention. It's quite clear that a lot of the stones have been removed, making it easier to maintain. I passed this one and it's uh, straightforward to read. This is William Benson Longmire of Crookend. He died in 1903, aged 67. And Mary Ann in 1918. And Christopher Longmire, it looks as though he died in 1900. As with almost all of these cemeteries, we have the war graves. This is Lance Corporal R.C. Wildshaw, the Royal Lancaster Regiment, August 1917, aged 22. And at the foot of the memorial, the family have added, at rest. Charles Perry, 1936, aged 71. And Ellen, his wife, 1950, also Edith, 1917, age 19. At the bottom, worthy of remembrance. A large plot here, protected by the iron railings which have survived. But sadly, the memorial stone has disappeared. Joseph Dockray, and you can see behind the original letters for Joseph Dockray. The stone has been re-lettered. Joseph Dockray, 1868-1932. Ethel Ismay, his daughter, 1935. Mary Jane, his widow, 1942. And his granddaughter, 2010. So I'm guessing in 2010, when she was added, they re-lettered the stone. And a nice job too, easy to read. The horizontal stone commemorates Emily Gertrude Faber, eldest daughter, the Reverend John Cook and Emily Faber. This one here is an old stone, but it's obviously had some recent attention because it's got some football colours tied around it. Let's have a closer look. The red scarf is for uh, Manchester United and on this little pot here we have Stretford Enders. If you're a Man United fan you'll know exactly what that means. On the left hand side we have a display Newton Heath L and Y R A F C. I think that might be Lancashire and Yorkshire. There certainly was a railway company called the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway Company and there's a picture of a steam engine so he was a supporter of a more local team. Here lies Frederick Attock, 1878, the founder of Newton Heath Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway Cricket and Football Club, which later became the Manchester United Football Club. He's been absent from official records for many years, but was found by a group and is now celebrated. There we are, Frederick Attock, one of the founders of the Great Man United Football Club. Very clear stone for Francis Alexander Walker Jones of Carnarvon, 1938. Lucy, his wife, daughter of John Marr of Lancaster, and their youngest daughter, Florence Nestor, 1944, and another daughter, Beatrice, who died in 1968. Another war grave tucked away with the rest. I notice up here they're using quite a creamy stone, not the white Portland stone we see more often. Private A.S. Bland, Army Pay Corps, 1918, aged 34. This one is falling over, but it's also an unusual shape in that the top has been cut at an angle. Susan Pell of Troutbeck Bridge, 1844 to 1919. And then Sarah Ann 
Pell or Fell, I'm not quite clear. Her sister, who died in 1931. Horizontal polished stone slab and simply reads Sarah Helen Wormsley, 1855 to 1913. Nice clear inscription for Robert Miller Somerville of Hazelthwaite, Windermere, 1821 to 1899. He was not for God took him. And Somerville, his wife, 1824 to 1905. Quite a number of the stones are difficult to read. I think the inscription's underneath, but we've got this sort of black mildew on them. And another one here. A little bit of colour here in the graveyard, where a couple of the more modern graves are still cared for. John Edward Barton, also his father Ernest, and Edith May underneath. And on the right we've got Roy Lewis, 2012-81, and I see engraved on that stone is a treble clef. So presumably his interest in life was playing music. A distinctive stone, Ruth Heather Rowe, 1944, aged six weeks. And her parents, Benjamin Stuart Rowe, 1951, and Patricia May Rowe, 1965. Underneath it says, Organist at St Mary's. Designed like an open book, Edmund Leach Compston, 1945, and his wife Sarah, 1987. So what's that, 42 years later, uh, she joined him. We've taken a rough piece of stone here and not attempted to shape the top at all. Edward Sandham, 1950, and Annas, 1951, and George, their son, and his wife, Dorothy. And next to it is another one where they've just taken the rough slab of stone and then smoothed out an area for the names, the epitaph, and engraved it on there. Mary Alice, the widow of Edmund John Crossfield, 1948. Also their son, Hugh. No indication where Edmund John Crossfield is. And just as I'm about to work my way out of the cemetery, we come across this row of Second World War graves. It's interesting to see them in this sort of creamy grey stone. I've not noted that before. I assume it's a stone that was found up here in the Lake District. This one, Flight Sergeant KCP Grant, wireless operator and air gunner on the Royal Air Force, 1946, just 21 years old. Just another chosen at random, we have Driver W. Park of the Royal Signals, 1943, age 33. The family have added beneath, years shall not darken nor shadows dim the beautiful memory we keep of him. And on the end we have Private V.B. Cooper, National Defence Companies, 1939, aged 43. And alongside it, in a similar coloured stone, Violet Cooper, the dear wife of V.B. Cooper, and a loving mother. So she, he left children behind when he died in 39. 
and she died in 82. That's 43 years later. Well, this is only a small cemetery in Windermere. It's worth making the effort. And uh, there are some interesting memorials here. So I'm going to leave you now from Windermere. Till the next time.